Hi there, folks. Um, now I've learned to use this technology, I'd like to share a few things uh, with you. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't really have the gift of the gab, so I'm going to rely on my notes to do this. Um, events are moving very, very quickly in the world. Uh, today, we had news of Obama's big plan to tackle climate change. Uh, this comes at the same time as news that the Pacific is warming up and is likely to deliver a whopper of an El Nino and unprecedented climate chaos. So, even if Obama's plan is more than just rhetoric and it's not just pasted onto a reality of fracking, tar sands and waging war for the last crumbs of remaining easy energy on the planet, the genie's out of the bottle. And we likely have runaway climate change, and I've forgotten just how many positive feedbacks. For as long as I've been at this, media outlets have somehow reflected each other, even if they come with their own biases. Since the Iraq War, CNN and BBC have lied to us. But it seems now we have reached a new level. When I look at Western media and then at outlets like RT, Press TV and as well as alternative media, one could be excused for thinking that we live on different planets. There's no relationship between them at all. Look for mention of a massacre in Odessa of 40 people by fascist thugs in the Western media, or at least some mention that children from Slavyansk have been evacuated and had to walk across the border to safety in Russia, while the Ukrainians try to turn them back to share in the fate of their city that's being bombarded and people killed, or of orphanages being bombarded, or the Western mercenaries fighting with the Ukrainian troops and presumably directing things from behind the scene. Not a word. It seems, though, according to Germany's Spiegel today, that the side of truth is winning the propaganda war or as they say, the Kremlin is winning the propaganda war. The US tried to lock the front door with sanctions, but they forgot about the back door. And now the Eurasian bloc is turning its back on the dollar, the almighty dollar, and Russia and China have now signed a huge 400 billion dollar gas deal that promises to lock Western companies out. Think 1984. Oceania is at war with Eurasia and the whole narrative has to be rewritten. War is peace and peace is war. Two plus two equals five. There is a lot for us to get our head around. Here in New Zealand, as elsewhere, I'm sure, if one chooses to keep one's head in the sand, one could just think that things are normal. Unless you're unemployed, or if you live in post-quake Christchurch. The blog I've been keeping for the past three years has been as important to me as it presumably is to you. And it was certainly a landmark for me when I reached my first one million views. Now I want to talk about matters that are a little bit more personal to me. In the middle of April, I received a phone call from Caroline Baker to say that Mike Rupert had died by his own hand. This was a terrible shock. For so many of us, 
not least to myself. Although I've never met Mike or even spoken to him, I counted him as a true friend. And the linchpin in a family of people that are united by their desire to see things as they are. In Guy McPherson's words, to look truth squarely in the eyes. Some of you will be aware that my health has been declining for some time. At about the time I heard of Mike's death, I started to experience symptoms like tiredness and dizziness. And recently, a week or so ago, after an episode that saw me um, have an overnight stay in hospital, it appears that I have been having what they call transient ischemic attacks or mini strokes. So I've been forced to take things a little bit more quietly. I've been told to not to drive a car, although no one's told me yet not to drive a horse. I've been thinking about what to do. I've been spending many hours every day chronicling stories that just by their accumulated mass or weight allow us to conclude which way the world and the human civilization is heading. I've come to the conclusion for myself, um, like Mike before me, that this is no longer what is needed. We really know which direction things are going. So what I will be doing uh, is this. I will still go through the news outlets every day, through the uh, Twitter feeds, etc., Facebook, and filter this on my Facebook and uh, Twitter pages. And I will use the blog slightly differently to reproduce only those items that help us to make sense of things. I will do less collection of stories myself, but rely on the people who are already doing it so well in their own spheres. People like Robert Scribbler, like the Arctic News, like the Saka, who's uh, collecting stories about the Ukraine, Paul Beckwith with his videos, and so on. I'm also grateful to the work that Rice Farmer and Jenna Orkin do every day, so tirelessly, collecting stories, and I will post Rice Farmer's posts of the major stories when they arrive. I would be grateful for your feedback if this meets your needs for information, and I also encourage you to check up on me on Facebook and Twitter, as well as on the blog, that's especially if you're a news junkie like I am. Now, just uh, one other thing, I always leave the most difficult to the last. I've not had an inco independent income for three years. I used to work as an acupuncturist before this, but my, but my partner Pam um, had a job in the Department of Conservation, so we have lived quite comfortably off that one income. However, she's been recently made redundant, so we've lost that income, and at present we're uh, living off her savings. Uh, so my needs are very modest, and I've never wanted to, and have never asked for money. However, if you do have something spare, and are willing to donate something, I would be eternally grateful. And uh, I put... PayPal up on my blog. So finally, yeah, I relish the connection with you all, and especially the wonderful messages of support I've received since Mike died. Um, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>